The idea of Edmodo is that you can create classes based on your school and then you have assignments, you prepare assignments and quizzes, you schedule. The strength of Edmodo and I will assume Canvas and Google Classroom as well is that you can create, you can use what is called in online learning the drip feed method. But I don't want to show these classes uh, on the screen because these classes contain information about my students who are or who used to be in this, uh, these courses and due to the data protection and whatnot, I'm going to create a new class for this particular session of hours. Now, most teachers usually have either from two to four classes. Uh, some teachers have three to four classes. For example, when I was teaching in, uh, in secondary school, I had a year with four classes. I had a year with three classes and I was teaching in sixth form college. So let's just say that we are choosing because we're teaching English grade seven, so it's seventh grade. Or you can use range, so that's between seventh to, but I'm going to just choose seventh grade for now. And I'll be teaching language arts, English. Uh, let's just choose ESL because English is a second language. Now the colors are just colors to code the classes or the, the subjects that you're teaching. So I'm just going to choose randomly, perhaps green. So my class is now going to be created. So these things, we just skip this because I'm going to go through these without using these wizards. So now we have an English grade 7 class. And I've got my name in there, Stor Morali. And uh, my class goes similar to what Google Classroom is using in terms of using codes so that you sign your students. And the second thing that you need to do after you create your class on Edmodo is to have in place uh, next to you, to your side, uh, your syllabus. For example, if you're teaching English grade 7, it will be very, very useful to have the English grade 7 syllabus right next to you. Because for a learning management system to work, you want to uh, present these uh, knowledge content bit by bit, not simultaneously. So what can be done is that you schedule your post. In Edmodo and in Google Classroom, you are able to choose when that particular content is published into your platform. You've got this syllabus next to you, to your side. Uh, all you need to do is to structure them to transfer all the organization into your Edmodo system or your Google Classroom system and then provide each of these particular elements with scheduled postings. So meaning they are posted according to the chronology that you set them to be. Now also in your post, you'll be able to attach files and images. The same thing, this is, these are the things that I'll go into later. I'll just post that up. Now as you can see, uh, another big strength of Edmodo, uh, this is something that is uh, a bit of a struggle with, uh, with Canvas, but Canvas can do this as well, is that you can manage your content using your Office 365 system. Now, when you're creating a classroom, you're also able to manage folders. You can create folders. You need to create this before the students come in. Uh, you can perform these activities and tasks during when the students are already in. But it is better, it is wiser to actually conduct these before the students come into your LMS systems. So you can create additional folders in here just to organize your content. Now, members. There are two types of members in Edmodo. There are two types of members usually in Canvas and Google Classroom. You can be more. But in Edmodo, you've got two groups, your students and your teachers. If you're planning to teach the subject with other teachers, you're able to invite them into this particular class and then you can conduct collaborative teaching, for example. But I believe what is the necessity for every single classroom of yours in Edmodo is to invite your students. There is a very nifty way to invite students. When you invite students, you can invite them by emails, you see. And then uh, if you have a spreadsheet of your students already in place, you can uh, Use that as your guidance to include your, your students in there. Now, when you have these students inside these rows, maybe alphabetical order if, you're, if you prefer, that's the, usually the common practice in schools, uh, you are also creating a gradebook. Now, the gradebook is where the grades of the students throughout that course uh, or the subject or the syllabus will be reported, will be visible to you and perhaps to the students if you give them uh, the privilege to do so. Now, this is not a nifty way to uh, to invite your students. You can either share the class code. So that's the class code of this particular class. You can invite them by email. You type the email that the student gives you. Or, this is what I like best with that model is that you can download a handout. And this handout 
It's an example of the handout that comes with that model. What it does is it provides you, the students and the parents, with the code of the class. You see this PDF file is a bit heavy, but it is something that you can print out or you can send massively to WhatsApp or to another media platform. You are able to download the Edmodo app to uh, these different markets. For example, an app for iOS, uh, iOS devices, Google Play for Androids and things that run on Android, Harmony. Uh, Microsoft, not really sure uh, if it still exists, but I believe so because it's still there. All right, let's go back to uh, Edmodo. So what you have there is you're able to invite your students in there. But again, like I said, inviting students, bringing them in, would be the one of the last things that you want to do. It will be one of the last things that you want to do. What you want to do is you prepare the platform, you prepare the environment for the students. It's ready, it's there for them to, uh, to explore. And one of the things that uh, make uh, learning management systems very powerful is the idea of providing them with assignments and quizzes. That can be done in the model. So you are able to create assignments. For example, let's say, introduce yourself. Let's say they are new students to the system. Of course, uh, it is now uh, well in the fourth month, the fourth month of the year. I just put that in as if that this is something that you want to do next year. So, please introduce yourself here to your friends. All right, just simple, something off the cuff. Uh, you can add attachments to this particular assignment. Uh, you can add links to this particular assignment and you can add something from your library, existing library. Assignment details usually tend to have, there's an option to either include it in your gradebook or not. But one thing that is also quite nifty, uh, it's quite creative as well and it's also quite useful, is, is that you're able to create quizzes. Uh, before going to quizzes, you can copy assignments from your other classes, from, from classes, uh, in model classes that you've online. But this is uh, something that's quite powerful because when you create quizzes, uh, it comes with an, something called an auto grader. An auto grader is uh, a system that's built in into the learning management system uh, to kind of uh, score or mark uh, using a computer algorithm. But nowadays, you've got new technologies that allows you to uh, allow you to uh, grade, auto grade certain kinds of uh, assignments and exercises. You need to consider when you are providing your students with online learning uh, through learning management systems is that before you start inviting them to your platforms, you need to prepare for the class. You need to prepare for the class. It would take usually around two to three days, around maybe less than a week, two, three days, four days at most, if you already have with you your syllabus or your scheme of work or your learning objectives or your learning outcomes in place. You put that to the side of your computer follow whatever is in there or if you want to do any enhancement and changes that's really up to you but basically you need to have something that's organized and structured for your students to follow now if you're going to do this off the cuff if you're going to do this ad hoc as in week by week it's going to be a bit problematic in that sense it's going to pose a lot of challenges in terms of what you're going to do with the students but if you have a structure even though that you're not following that particular structure uh, you have a kind of a backbone to whatever that you're doing here with your online learning so we're going to go on to go to, to Canvas now because we covered that model uh, in So in Canvas, the idea is to create your own course. Well, I've got a lot of courses in there. So I'm going to start with a new course. Again, the idea is, like I said, if you are a teacher with teaching three classes, four classes of the same level, it's best to actually create only one course first so that you are able, because of the, the same level that they are in, you are able to duplicate that course in the future. All right. Canvas LMS. Let's say Canvas LMS webinar. Yeah. So now I'm creating a course. When you start creating your Canvas uh, course or Canvas subject, uh, like I said, what you wanted to do is you need to schedule your post. It's very, it's a bit different from Google Classroom. It's a bit different from Edmodo because Edmodo and Google Classroom, 
those two platforms allow you for drip feed method in terms of scheduling the time uh, when these content are introduced to your students in the class, in the lessons. Uh, but what Canvas does is that it allows you to assign the modules chronologically. For example, if you go on to modules, let's say you have, you have a class that you intend to run an online lesson with that's uh, surmounting to three weeks, for example, amounting to three weeks. What you want to do is you have, want to create three units, one unit per week. Start with, let's say, a week one. learning to count. All right, let's have a lesson about that's now because uh, we've been using uh, English as an example. Let's do math, learning to count. You add the module in there. So that's your first module for that first week. Now again, if you have a syllabus scheme of work with you, that's very useful. So what you want to do next is you want to add uh, further things inside that week. For example, on day one of that week, for example, Monday, you want them to, uh, to read something. So you want to create a page, create a new page. Monday, for example, it can be day one. I usually do day one, day two, day three, but it depends on where you're teaching uh, or depends on how you want to go about structuring your, your teaching with your students. You can put Monday or you can even put the date. For example, let's say Monday, today's, uh, today's the fifth. Yeah, fifth of April, let's say. So numbers add that in so that's your first part of your first week that's the first day of your first week now if you want to add content into this particular lesson for a particular day let's say the content is around one hour or 30 minutes yeah so you edit this so you add certain things inside let's say now canvas is a bit more geared towards higher education i have to be honest it's not something that you that might work with i'm not really sure it might work with uh, middle childhood or early childhood education people from k until uh, k6 or until six grade seven perhaps maybe that's when you start bringing canvas in unlike google classroom and Modo, which i will come back later so let's say today we are going to learn about numbers yeah about counting numbers backwards let's give them a challenge counting numbers backwards yeah and then you save and publish you get basically if you're creating a page uh, that's that's worth to be read in one hour you have to have a lot of text in there you have to have a lot of content in there for the students to be actively learning it doesn't have to be lengthy in terms of text wise it can be something that they have to go off from the monitor Numbers, and then 8th April, another page, yeah, the new one, 8th April, odd numbers. So assuming that your students are learning this at home, you're providing them with content in there, content that can be from somewhere, from the internet, from YouTube, alright. So you're moving this bit by bit, Lab. structure. Uh, you just start with the structure of what you're trying to teach. You just start with the syllabus or the scheme of work that you have and then provide them with things to do. We, we, we started with page, now we move on to something that's more, let's say, uh, a bit more high stakes. For example, a discussion. Yeah, discussion on the 10th of April. Talk about what you like about numbers. Yeah. Uh, usually when I have the activities that are included into uh, my, my, my lessons, I usually indent them to, to differentiate, them from, differentiate them from the content that they read to the things that they do, uh, the activities that they do. Remember, online learning, the learning is not online, the learning is about the activity, alright? You can have one hour of online interaction with a student, just lecturing them one, the whole hour. Learning might not take place. Uh, learning only takes place when the learning is active. So activity learning is very, very important. Even though the online part, the online interaction is around five minutes through Zoom or through your Canvas, uh, what you provide them to do within the realm of what they have, for example, the home, for example, go outside, look into the skies and look at how many planes fly over your, uh, your skyline, for example, and then come back in the next two hours and then share with others how many planes. So those kind of things that 
It's not necessarily online learning, but it is definitely active learning. So don't try to emphasize the bit where it says online learning because online learning does not necessitate learning. It's the activity that necessitates the learning. All right, so let's have, let's come back to this one. Let's have that as a discussion. Now, when you start with a new unit, like I said, the drip fit method that's in class, Google Classroom and Modo uh, might not be available in, in Canvas. But what you can do is you can lock a particular unit. Or what I tend to do is I tend to add prerequisite, meaning you have to you have to complete the previous unit to be able to access this other unit. So when I set that to be the prerequisite, meaning the student has to go through the week one and uh, participate in the activities in there. It can be discussions, it can be quizzes and assignments. Uh, only when upon completing those uh, activities and learning that you do, providing them, providing the teachers with uh, indicators and evidence that they did learn, then they can access the second week, which is uh, week two, learning to do math. All right. So there you go. You got week two, learning to do math, and then you can add like all like earlier. You can add more pages. Or I'm just going to show you certain uh, features of Canvas, like what we did with Google Classroom and Emodo earlier. You can create new quizzes. All right, let's have a quiz here. Uh, I did that for my other my other module, by the way. It's 4.4 survey on COVID-19 in online teaching. That's something that I uh, that I offer for online teachers or new online teachers, teachers who are new to online learning. But for this particular uh, lesson that we're having, let's have week two quiz. How to, how to, how to count? Let's see how to count small items. Yeah, let's have that that as an assignment. All right, and then at one level, I like to indent that. So that is a quiz. Now, what Canvas has, and this is something that's similar to Google Classroom and also to Edmodo. More about Google Edmodo is that you're able to create your quiz questions so you edit that think about what kind of quiz this is going to be yeah you can you can add some descriptions of what it is how to count small items and then you grade the quiz is it a graded quiz or is it a graded survey let's have it as a graded quiz it's part of the assignment group shovel answers meaning that under the that's not shuffle answers because we're dealing with uh, with uh, with uh, young young children here. Time limit. Let's set the time limit to perhaps maybe thirty minutes. So remember, when you're working with uh, with younger students, the attention span. Uh, this is uh, this is proven by, by by reviews in the literature and by research studies. The attention span of younger learners uh, tend to be shorter than uh, adults. So you have to put that into consideration. Uh, maybe that it's going to be ten minutes. It's going to be fifteen minutes. Some some young learners are only attentive for five minutes. So those are the things that you need to consider, and also uh, in terms of uh, the, the forgetting curve, which is Ebbinghaus theory. Uh, when you teach something to students, uh, students tend to uh, be uh, more forgetful of what they learn uh, uh, because they are they are so entrenched with other stuff that they are doing in the moment. They are quite preoccupied with other things while doing this. So those are the things that you need to figure out in terms of online learning. It's quite the dynamics of teaching is very different from online learning from traditional learning where you are there in the class physically to make sure that they are always attentive. Or when you're dealing with students who you don't see beyond the, the, the screen, beyond your computer screen, then it's, it's a bit more challenging. All right. So we're able to create quizzes in here. Yeah. Now, when you create a quiz, you can assign questions. The same thing with Edmodo. Let's say, let's have a new question. For example, question, uh, again, like with Edmodo, now you have more, more options compared to Edmodo. Uh, in here, you're able to choose other kind of a high stakes or higher order thinking uh, questions. Essay questions, for example, multiple drop downs are in Edmodo. Let's just choose multiple drop downs. The question is, what can be counted, for example? Yeah. What can be found? All right. Now let's add some answers to this. Possible answer. Rice. Can rice be counted? Oh wait, wait. That's a bit. Uh, some people can count rice, but count is meant to be uncountable. Let's say sugar. Sugar can be counted. Yeah. If you have microscopes. Now I'm always gonna stuff, but 
you know, realistically, you don't count sugar. Unless they are sugar cubes, of course. Uh, sand. Uh, let's say uh, candies. Yeah. Chairs. People. All right. And then you assign. If the student chooses the answer, you can provide them with hints, helpful hints, or something that they can uh, feedback from the from the teachers uh, that would. Uh, allow them to, uh, you know, to learn from, for example, their mistakes or to learn from uh, what they've done co uh, correct in this instance. Alright. Okay. So, in Canvas, you can create questions. You can create different kinds of questions. You can create quizzes. You can create assignments. Uh, that's one strength of Canvas. And you can see that I'm, I'm trying to, to cut my uh, my time short because I want to show go back to Google Classroom in a module later. Things that you've missed. Those were on Facebook stream. Uh, on Canvas, you have places where you can look into the grades, the students' grades. I won't be showing you uh, my other classes, but in the students' grades, you'll have a list of students, students' names, and the work that yet they yeah. Is supposed to be doing and then be graded. All right. Now, what was the one that I did just now? Let's go back. Maybe this will work. All right. Uh, I think I've spent around close to two hours on this. Now, uh, one thing that is quite useful, of course, with Canvas is that if you are, if you are pressed into creating uh, a lesson or a course or a subject course. Uh, for a group of students but you are running out of time you've run out of time you've got your class to be done in two days time and you need to be done it to be two weeks length or three weeks length for the students now if you are, if you stumble upon that kind of situation where you need to create something from scratch uh, and then you don't have the materials to do so what canvas does is that you can go to commons and commons is where you can basically uh, copy others uh, other people's work uh, for your own personal use or your own non-commercial use and this is uh, this is uh, common practice in, in canvas and it's also uh, it is not it is under creative commons so it's not uh, breaking uh, breaching any laws or legal uh, what it calls intellectual property rights or whatnot uh, what it provides you when you're on commons now I can see that my connection tonight is a bit slower than before so I'm not really sure what's happening with that but what you can do with commons is this yeah, while waiting for it to load of course uh, on canvas if you don't have any material to create as a course there are already courses available on canvas commons for you to copy and for you to use at your own class let me click that once more and see what's happening here this is the, the, the slowest it's ever been in terms of downloading the commons part mm, interesting All right, while waiting for that, I'm going to show you back to Edmodo. Edmodo for me, uh, when we talked about Edmodo earlier, around one hour ago, uh, it gives you uh, a lot of features in terms of drip feeding your students that work. We'll come back to that. Let's see if comments. No, it's still not there. All right, let's go to classes then. Uh, Google Classroom. I did the alpha classes. Create another class. Create class. Remember, you need to register. Your school has to have a Google Suite for Education for this to work. But then again, uh, you most people, most schools that I know, and most lecturers that I know, most teachers that I know use the free version. Let's create a class. Let's put a beta class section. Uh, let's have science subject science. Let's give a, put a virtual room science 01. Create, and you've got yourself. A Google Classroom, hopefully. Wow. Hmm. Now, this this makes you think. Call modularized modularized learning, or what I prefer to call drip feed method. Uh, so students are not going to see the whole uh, three months of lesson, but they are going through each each part of your lesson bit by bit. Uh, that's the way that you want it to be in your physical classroom, for example. Yeah. So that's where in Google Classroom, where the learning takes place is in the classwork part. 
in the classwork part you are allowed to create assignments and questions uh, let's just give one particular use here uh, that's what was better class it was it had that that kind of rugby ball so let's have uh, health health yeah so we had a topic and then within this topic you create uh, material perhaps something to talk about how to keep yourself healthy and then uh, you provide them with the content that you want them to read I'm not really sure why this pop-up keeps on popping up. I've been using Google Classroom for many years now uh, let's say that's that uh, that's for only my better class not my alpha class do I want it to be for all students yeah and yeah health should be under health topic so it will appear under it will appear under the health topic so there you go and you can add another one what do you want to put under health uh, let's do another let's have an assignment how do you keep yourself healthy give them give this a point uh, a point system that let's give it 100 or you can have it 50 all right give it a due date let's say it's in April topic falls under health all right now you, you if you want you can add further information for example a video or uh, you can add a video inside here for example a YouTube video or you can add certain handouts that are digitalized so you have that you assign this and it would fall under your health topic now imagine that you're doing this for the whole three three weeks so you've got a topic on health you've got a topic on fitness for example and then you've got subtopics under fitness you've got a topic on uh, exercises and subtopics under exercises so that's the idea of the learning management system the the, the the core of an lms the ability to organize to structure the students learning so much so that you don't have to practically no virtually we always be there so meaning the students go into your class, LMS class, and you're not there. They're just in there because they're learning self-paced, they're independent learners, they're in there. And then they're browsing through what they need to do uh, you know, for this particular week. So let's say they, are, they don't have time in the morning, they don't have time in the afternoon because they, uh, they've got certain things to do, commitments. So they are in the, at, in the evening before sleep, they go into your classroom and they look for things that they need to do. Now, remember that the teacher's role is to always remind them of, of things to do. There's always reminders for them to follow. And that goes under Google Calendar and also in Moodle you've got calendar as well. So the idea of a learning management system is to be able to organize the learning, to structure the learning in such a way, to modularize the learning in such a way that learners are able to follow, uh, follow through with, uh, with the learning objectives and the learning pathways. And adding to that using your drip fit method or your modularized system with prerequisites and, uh, and uh, what they call this and rules, they are not allowed to progress further into the learning pathway because they have to follow this step by step so that they do not cram whatever they're, they're studying or they do not uh, you know, finish up all the whole three weeks within only two days. So it gives them the idea that they are being uh, facilitated in terms of their learning, although they're, they're independent and they're self-paced. Let's see the common spot. Yeah, there you go. So we're going, we're going back to Canvas. So let's say you're teaching math, right? And you don't have any materials for your Canvas uh, module. Type math, maybe uh, grade seven, perhaps. Maybe that would bring up, yeah. So if you want a whole, for example, if you want something that is a whole course, choose a course, yeah. So in Canvas, if you don't have materials to teach your students with, you can look for materials made by others. Let's say, I wanna choose this one, fifth grade math, all right. Now remember, earlier I did, uh, I did a module on math on Canvas around maybe 20 minutes ago. So what I do is, I, as a teacher, you need to look into the content of that particular, uh, for that, for, for example, for this particular uh, topic or subject or unit, and make sure that these are all aligned, are mostly aligned to your learning outcomes and learning objectives, all right? Make sure that everything in this class is aligned with what you want, what you intend to teach your students. 
because it will be useless if you're going to present them with content that's already made but it's not made for your particular context all right so let's just make this as an example i'm just going to import this and i'm going to put this in my canvas lms which is what i did earlier and i'm going to import that whole thing into my course this whole module that i have yeah and i'll go back to my dashboard where i have all my courses so it's canvas lms webinar i'm going to look for that particular course now these are the courses that i'm running on canvas uh, let's see if I can find yeah, Canvas LMS webinar. I'm going to do a recap about what we've done so far on our learning management system. So whenever I talk about uh, creating your, using your own LMS for your students, what is most important is to prepare for your lessons. Not prepare for your class, I, I mentioned that a few times earlier, but prepare for your lessons. Meaning, if you have a three months worth of lessons that you need to prepare for your online learning, you need to have something to guide you with. So you need to either have your syllabus, or your scheme of work or your learning objectives and learning outcomes and you have that to your side now the reason why we want that to, to be there uh, is so that when you use Edmodo when you're using Google Classroom and when you're using uh, Canvas you have a structure and organization of how you want the learning to happen for your students before you invite your students to your LMSs to your platforms so you prepare an online platform that provides all this I'm just going to show you one that we did earlier But what we did earlier with Canvas was that we structured the lesson, which was math, by the way. We structured the lesson as if, as if it's meant to be done step by step. So what we have here is we have a screen where we have our modules uh, of our lessons for math. So on Canvas, that can be done using weeks and modules uh, and units. So you have a module with content within it, inside it, and the students go to content step by step. And then they move on to the next week. But remember about the method of not providing the students with the whole gamut of your lesson. For learning to be independent and self-paced, but at the same time regulated and facilitated in such a way that it follows your syllabus and scheme of work, you need to have proper guidelines on what comes first and what comes next. So that means, for example, in order for the students to learn in week two, they have to first complete everything in week one. Uh, that includes discussions, so assignments, and, graces, uh, and quizzes, and, and all these other activities that they will have to complete. And then they move on to week two. So that's the idea of modularization or drip feed method. Now, I'm going to go back to Edmodo here. Uh, I'm not really sure if you actually did this. But the idea is the same. The idea is basically the same. Uh, earlier, around two, two hours ago, I created for the other audience from other platforms, this particular class, English Grade 2. Uh, when you prepare your class, the first thing that you know is to, you, you need to think about how to schedule your course. For example, this is a post meant to be for later. You see this, this icon here? Well, you schedule where your post starts to, uh, to appear. Let's see, April. Uh, on Edmodo, I'm just going to bring the, the salient points or the sound bites of each particular uh, platform. Let's start with Edmodo. Edmodo, you can use games. Just click a game here to play. Uh, to be used as one of the activities that you want to include into your uh, into your learning, in your repertoire of learning. Now, for example, I've, chose, I've chosen the game Survivor. Uh, this is a game, I believe, Survivor is a game for English language. Alright, it's loading up. Now, again, like I said, uh, one of the issues of uh, using online learning is the, the, the issue of uh, being always online, the connectivity. Again, I brought up earlier the use of offline learning platforms, uh, uh, for example, Spoodle, and also the usage of Google uh, Drives or uh, Save Us Offline feature. So this is one game that is in Edmodo. A nice game to have. You can hear the music. So this is for these are for kids, perhaps around grade six, grade seven, maybe earlier than that. So you've got your whole class playing this game, and it's a nice technology to have. Uh, it's a nice activity to have online, perhaps. 
So there are a lot of games on Nmodo. I think I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, to pick, uh, cherry pick some of the features that uh, these uh, Google Classroom and Modo and Canvas has. Uh, in terms of Nmodo, there are a lot of features, but one that I haven't highlighted in my other videos earlier is that. Uh, that's me. Yeah, I'm going to move there. Is that me? Am I in that, am I in that group? Yeah. All right. Oh, where am I? All right. All right, I'm just going to leave it there. On Google Classroom, uh, the features there is the scheduling system. Like I said earlier, you can create uh, certain uh, college topics and activities, and then you can put sub activities within that. And then in Canvas, uh, more or less the same, uh, the same kind of feature. You've got your modularized platforms, and you've got your assignments, and you've got your attendance in there as well. And in Google Classroom, you don't have attendance. You have attendance in Canvas. I think we're just going to wrap up everything. So basically, that's everything for me. Uh, the idea was today where I started at 10.30 p.m., so around 7 something, 7.30, half past 7 in the United States, around uh, half past 3 in the United Kingdom. Uh, so those who've been watching me from all over the world, thank you so much for attending uh, this particular session. Uh, what we covered today was we've covered Schoology, we've covered Moodle, we've covered Edmodo, we've covered Google Classroom, and we've covered Canvas. Now, there are other LMSs that I want to bring in uh, into the, the fray, but these LMSs are what we call proprietary LMSs. So LMSs that you would not have and no one be able to get hold of unless you pay for a lot of money for them. Uh, so certain kinds, certain amounts of money. Uh, but these proprietary software platforms are usually quite good as well. For example, we've got Blackboard Learn, you've got uh, other platforms that you have to desire to learn, Brightspace, for example, those kind of platforms. So you do have to have a, kind of like a financial package to pay for these things. The, the, the things that I presented earlier today, like for example, Moodle and Modo, Google Classroom and Canvas, they are all freeware, are free to use, of course, based on the certain privileges that you get. Canvas, you pay more, you get more features. Those kind of things will happen with these kind of situ uh, these kinds of platforms. On that note, I'm gonna sign off and I'm going to present another video of this on Zoom. Uh, for those who were here based on my Facebook stream, I apologize for the interruptions. For those who were on Zoom and for those who were on Periscope, uh, thank you so much for attending. But that's it for tonight or for this evening. So for everyone who's watching, good morning, good evening, and good night.